Hello people, I'm Jabby Kuwait, joined by Tara, the Erickson, and we're gonna look at the official movie trailer for it. The Dark Side of Life, Mumbai City. This is from T-Series. Thank you to T-Series for allowing us to react to this. And uh, this is directed by Tariq Khan. It's got a lot of people in the cast. Mahesh Bhatt, Avil, Nick Hill, Ratna Parki, Deep Raj, Rana, Alisha, Sima Khan, Gul Hamid, and, uh, and KK Manon. That's cool. हम जब भी शहर में आए थे तो सोचा था शहर को खरीद लेंगे पता ही नहीं चला शहर ने हमें कब खरीद लिया कहीं ड्रॉप कर दूं नो नो थैंक्स पेप नहीं करूंगी तुम्हारा अच्छी लगी हां कब उन्होंने कह रहे थे कि हम दोनों को शादी कर लेनी चाहिए शादी के बाद कुछ नया थोड़ा ना मिलेगा आई वुड लव टू गो ब्रो कितने लोग होंगे मैन वो होता है performs like a man outside and on bed too the inspector aisa kar raha tha hum musalman hain isliye naam kya hai iska uh, hindu uh, mera matlab uh, chief prince aur main muslim tum yahan par uh, singer banne aaye hai na singer banne ka to aap to mamma ka tha Like, did you see that guy was reading an L. Ron Hubbard book? No. Yeah. So that says something right there. This dude, <laughs> he's reading a book by a Scientolo the Scientologist creator. कल से वेजिटेरियन खाना ही लाना। आप मेरी वजह से क्यों वेज खाना खा रहे हैं? क्योंकि मैं नहीं चाहता कि मेरी वजह से आपका धर्म भ्रष्ट हो। मेरा धर्म इतना भी कमजोर नहीं है। Happy birthday, book. Oh boy. Oh boy. Every time I see cocaine happening on screen it just mm, it makes me really uncomfortable. Mm. That was slick. heavy that was a uh, really really heavy um, I, I initially I was like I don't know what the connection is between all these stories mm -hmm. and then it finally concluded uh, letting you know like all these people are driven to suicide for some reason and my hope is that at the end of it they're like you don't have to there's there's still hope at the end of the day you can seek help you know it, it, it in a way it reminds me of crash Mm -hmm. Because Crash had like all the different stories going on, and it was the theme running through it was racism. Mumbai, just so you, for your reference and context, Mumbai is kind of like New York. Okay. And then like Delhi is like Los Angeles. Oh and, yeah. And so I don't know if you ever spent time in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then you can you maybe using the that, different vibes. You, yeah. You, yes. You, you get like how how hard that city can be on you. Yeah. Um, and why it might drive you to do some unthinkable things. This is a rough subject matter to try to tackle. People dealing with the potential of taking their own life. Like, I, it wasn't fun watching 13 Reasons Why, uh, for me personally. Like, it's just, 
you know, it, it, it takes balls to explore that subject, in my opinion. I really related to that title card at the end where they're like, the enemy you're looking for is you. Yeah. Uh, where I was like, oh, okay, got it. Sometimes people will give people crap for wanting to commit suicide, saying that they're not mentally strong enough. Yeah. And there's a lot of times when that is not the case, meaning right. the circumstances surrounding them and their ability to control the way that their mind works is not in their favor genetically. Right. So people need help, counseling, medication, friends, family, and support. Yeah. And when all of those do not exist for a person, and there's also outside circumstances that are either threatening them or making it really, really difficult for them to carry out just a nice, healthy life. Yeah. Um, sometimes the easiest way out is just to end it. Like, yeah. and I understand that. Uh, the thinking. The point of view, because I've never been in a situation that's so extreme. Mm -hmm. where I've wanted to commit suicide, but I do know of friends mm -hmm. and even their situation has not been so extreme. They still have like a, how, a place to live. They're not being like stalked by anyone or threatened, mm -hmm. but they do still feel the struggle whether or not to stay here in this world. And that is a mental struggle that a lot of people cannot understand if you have not been there and your genetics don't work that way. Some right. people don't produce, I think, enough serotonin and synapses connect differently yeah. and it's difficult. It seems like this is more informed by circumstance than anything else though. Mm -hmm. More than it being a genetic predisposition towards suicide or mm -hmm. you know, an inability to process things the yeah. way a normal person would, it feels like these, this is driven by a very narrow focus of some kind where you are struck with this problem all of a sudden mm -hmm. and you can't see anything but that issue. And I think that happens to the best of us where you're like, if you're a hyper analytical person like myself, sometimes something can feel like the end of the world even though it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And I find that often like when I look back a couple years ago, a year ago even, or even just last month, I'll have this like anxiety that this, intensity about something when I'm like, oh, like that, it just passed. Especially like, like YouTube videos, like I'm sure you can relate to this, where you, you put all the stock and emotion into this video and it's so important, and then it just passes and you're like, oh, well, it's just another, vi another video. It's like people didn't care that much. It was, you know, dramatic in the moment, but then the next day people got swept up into something else. Yeah. I have allowed myself to fall victim to that in my last breakup, where it's like, it was so intense for me that I didn't see a way out. And that can be, you know, really scary. I can see why those characters might think or believe that that is the only measure they have left. Like I said, that's a difficult topic to tackle. I just, my one hope is that it's not just, you know, just sad. I, I hope that it's not just like the ending of 13 Reasons Why and there is this silver lining in it. There is this hope in it where you're like, no, like there's still, there's another way. You, you just have to expand your viewing angle, your perspective on this and note and, and, and try to realize that it's a small blip in time and you'll be able to move past it. Like if one person was dealing with like a breakup or something like that, and it's like, yeah, I'm sure that's a big contributing factor to a number of suicides that have happened. Mm -hmm. It's just like a nasty breakup someone's gone through. For anyone going through something watching this, I, I hope that you'll take this message to heart, which is like, you'll be fine and you, you'll you be able to move on from this. I've gotten a lot of messages from people on YouTube, comments of people who are like, you know, I was going through a dark time and I was considering taking my life, but I had your your videos, your channel, like help me get through it. I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know why, but cool. Let's just keep doing that. <laughs> don't take your own life, you know? You, yeah. you will be fine. You, you'll be all right. It'll be okay. Yeah. Just gotta keep going forward. But I like what you said, because you were talking about like how some people just don't have all the faculties. Mm -hmm. that most of us do and they get shamed for that like mm -hmm. you need to be stronger that's selfish that's selfish of you to take your own life how dare you right it's like no no you're not you're not empathizing with their perspective right uh, you know that's the place to start yeah and try to walk them away from the ledge yeah um, this thing to do is just like support in a way that you can and maybe add curiosity to the situation, asking questions rather than telling them what to do is yeah. probably a better way to approach it. The thing that I, I felt the most was that image of the father and daughter. And she's like, are we gonna jump, Daddy? Oh God, me too. She's like, how are we gonna jump from here? Yeah. Because she doesn't know what's happening. And yeah. that kind of irked me to the point where I was like, 
I've been listening to a lot of true crime podcasts and yeah. these people, when they're in a certain state of mind, yeah. they don't take into account the young lives that they are damaging, meaning lives that haven't been able to fully process the world or come up with, they just haven't been able to grow into their own person when you're dealing yeah. with a child. And because there's just some people, they're an adult and they feel like they know what's best or like everybody needs to be taken out and as well as them. Or they maybe don't feel like there's anyone who can take care of them. There's a way. I mean, it's just to drag a child into that is yeah. was very irking to me because yeah. they don't know what's going on. Although, let's say that she would be orphaned. Her dad kills himself and she'd be there and nobody would be able to yeah. take care of her. I don't know. I still feel like it would probably, there would be a way that it could work out. I mean, I know that I wouldn't just leave, like if a seven-year-old just popped up at my door and was like, listen, I don't know where my dad went. I found him outside on <laughs> the ground. I don't know where to go. I'd be like, cool, let's figure this out. Let's eat some top ramen and yeah. like, let's discuss. Like, yeah. I think it would, there would be a way to figure it out. But yeah. then I know people's argument is gonna be like, foster care. She's gonna end up somewhere weird. And it's gonna be like a hard knock life. I don't know. I still think she's just like, you do you also don't kill yourself. But yeah. I, that, I agree with you. It hit, it hit home for me. I was like, oh, don't take the girl with you. You know, yeah. I don't know. I think that you did a good job just now of presenting both both aspects, like mm -hmm. both voices that, that come up in a situation like that because there are a lot of kids who are orphaned and living in the streets in the world. Yeah. I guess the father is thinking, I can, if I'm, Probably. I'm, I'm trying to like, just, you know, understand it, is that he doesn't want his girl to end up that way. Yeah. You know, and it's like, he might as well just take her with him, which- I agree. There's no, oh, yeah. there's no good That's version of that. probably what he's, yeah. yeah. There's no good version of that. No. I think that this at least, at the very least, will hopefully inspire conversation about this thing that a lot of us don't feel comfortable talking about. Even now, I'm like, it makes me really uncomfortable to <laughs> explore this conversation. I don't yeah. like it. It's so morbid. Put the suicide prevention number in the comments yeah. or in your description. Yeah. Do a little help. Yeah. You... There are lines like that that help you out. I know my friends have used them. And it, even if it feels weird calling it, they yeah. are there and trained to help you. Yeah. So uh, it's a thing to take advantage of when you do have those thoughts to not think that you are abnormal or that there's something wrong with you. People You're... go through it all the time. Just out of curiosity, the friends that called the suicide hotline, mm -hmm. are they men or women? Both? Both were women. Okay. Yeah. I feel like a lot of guys are often, I use this word loosely, but are burdened with that need to, to maintain their masculinity. Right. And, and don't want to reach out because then that mm -hmm. would question their manhood, that they're not strong enough to, to deal with this problem on their own. So my thing in saying that is, fuck that. <laughs> Yeah. Get help. Like, well, also, get help. Yeah, and get help before this even suicide hotline because a guy who's not willing to open up emotionally to a situation or with, you know, it's, you're just not going to be good in a relationship if you're like, I need to maintain my masculinity at all times. Like, you're already... You're going against the grain here and trying to be open and available to human beings. You just need to be open to accepting, like... You know, love and acceptance, and if you just always have this guard on, it's it's not gonna be really good for you or anybody else. Yeah. I think you need to let that go first. Go to counseling, be a good partner, let the masculinity go. You can still be a guy and still talk about your feelings, you know? There doesn't it doesn't have to be two hard lines there. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of philosophy and things to consider. A lot. Take it with a grain of salt. You guys, thanks so much it's for true. hanging out with us. Please check out Tara Erickson. She's on the social media. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our other reactions, reviews, and short films. Get help if you are feeling that darkness. Do not take your own life. We all love you. You'll be all right. I am Jabby Kway. This is Tara Erickson. Peace out.